Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Wired Up with Mark. Uh, today I learned a hard lesson to always check your audio before you start onto a long video. I just uh, recorded an hour and a half of me building these uh, modules and the audio was all uh, screwed up. So um, now I got it fixed and instead of redoing everything from scratch, uh, I'm not going to let this opportunity go by to just at least explain uh, what I had done. So, uh, a little oversight that I had was that uh, as people were, I, I realized as people were using um, the audio unit for an audio effect, we don't have an audio input module. How, how could I have missed this? I don't know. Uh, there's 189 modules and I missed one of the more important uh, utilities there. But uh, um, this will be coming up in a uh, future update where I add it into the standard library. Um, so what I did was I showed you how to create um, two you know, new modules, and there's, this is a kind of tile and module pair that reflect the audio output, um, output tile and module, like this, right? So audio tiles, uh, sorry, tiles are uh, um, just a kind of mini version of the uh, bigger relative uh, where there's more functionality built into them. And uh, what, I, what I did is I started with the kind of form factor and just kind of went inside of the module and rearranged it on the inside uh, to create the audio input. And then uh, if we, uh, I'll explain it a little bit. So, you know, here's the volume control. You, you have these core, uh, mod, these core sub modules that kind of hide this layer of abstraction uh, where you have all these things kind of going on inside and you can have go down deeper and deeper into each one of these um, to see what's going on. But at this first level inside of a tile or a module, I always make it so that the only thing you're seeing here is all of the elements that will be on the front panel, all of the inputs and outputs and controls, and then everything else gets packed into this core and this core can be reused in other modules. You can kind of take it out and put in, uh, use it in other things that you, you want. Um, but I, what it's doing is it's hiding this level of abstraction so that you can go inside of it and kind of digest everything in little bits. So um, instead of having the DAC node here, the digital to audio um, converter that goes into the output, we have the analog uh, to digital converter that goes in and basically does the same thing. Uh, just in reverse. The idea I had for the audio input module to expand its functionality a little bit beyond um, just having more outputs or whatever uh, is that you can on each of these four inputs select the channel that you want using a knob. And this is a cool feature, um, especially with people who have multiple inputs that they want to route into Audulous. Um, and the way that we did this, uh, to go inside, we see all of this again. This is the, co the core of the module is here. And all of these things, these are the inputs, outputs, the peak detector lights, uh, and then the knobs over here um, going into this core. And we go inside of this. Uh, it looks like I didn't finish this quite. That's good. You can see me putting some finishing touches on this stuff. So do the control, just lining, lining things up a little bit. I'll do another build when I'm too sad to, to restart this one from the beginning. Uh, I, I thought it was pretty good. I had a lot of cool tips in it, but uh, we'll do it next time. So um, what this is doing is each control, each knob, is going to this audio input selector, and there are four of them for each of them. And you go inside, and you have a analog to digital converter ADC node um, that's, that is selecting one of the 16 possible channels that are available. And we can see here, uh, when you go into timing mode, that only this output, or the, only this input, uh, the ADC node is being processed. The trick that, that I elucidated in this stream was that um, you want to, in every possible way, optimize your modules as you're building. Uh, because all of these little tiny um, CPU savings add up over time. So we can see right now I'm using 9-10% of my total CPU with what I have up here. 
and this one node is using a quarter of a percent of this percentage. Uh, and so if you imagine you have 16 of these, 16 times four, then you suddenly are just, you're wasting a bunch of, of um, uh, you're wasting a bunch of CPU resources that you don't need to be processing. So this is a way to get around that. And, uh, what we did is we created this 16 way spigot switch where you have the knob that uh, selects one of these inputs and then sends it to this output. And that looks like this on the inside. So. Um, you have the control that comes in here. It gets multiplied by 15.99. That's how you uh, interact with this DMUX and MUX matrix where um, this is this control is selecting, okay, this, between 0 and 0.999, it selects this output. And all the way up to 15.99, uh, this output. And we are sending this one value to these the active input right here and that will turn this whatever is upstream from it whatever is going this way you know on on the patch it will turn that on uh, and everything else that is not active will be turned off and then this together makes the signal flow go from you know here to here to the output um, so I kind of breeze through that but basically what this is is it's it's switching uh, these these two the mux and demux are kind of they're, they're a pair and they're looking at different outputs together and they're kind of cycling through so that you just have um, these activated at once so uh, go up here it sends the select value out as well so you can tell which uh, output is selected and then we come back up here and we're sending all of these out this is an audio peak detector it can tell when you've exceeded um, the output range. Um, we have all of these, sending all these different signals out to here to the front panel that ultimately is getting arranged here. So this way, this, you know, number one, the output one here, excuse me, you can select different channels uh, up to 16. Okay, so the way that you'd use an audio effect in Audulous, uh, for example, you have you want a stereo effect that's coming in. You use the audio input uh, tile now, and we would have the audio coming in, and we're combining it uh, into a poly signal, like a uh, stereo signal, and then sending it through this delay, and then going out and here, right? And now say we want two uh, time controls, right, for the delay. We want the mix uh, to stay the same. We've seen this on other tutorials. Um, what I'm gonna do is select this two poly knobs tile and put the poly signal onto the delay. And then I can basically have access to the left and right uh, time controls for this one module. Um, you can imagine like this two, this, this little um, number here, it's like there's two signals at once passing through. And it's similar to you having two delays like this. So you have like a left left delay and a right delay. Let me, let me create two different ones. All right, so this is the same like this. And imagine we're going to the output here too, right? This and this are the same, except what this allows you to do is you have one mix control for both of these. So instead, if you're doing it this way and you're just hooking, hooking them up directly like this uh, to go to the output, you'd have to, if you wanted to change the mix, you'd have to change them on both and you have to get in like, okay, how are they exact, right? And maybe you want to do that. Maybe that's, maybe that's what you want to do. But usually the mix, you just want to have one mix control for both sides. Uh, and this way, you're able to stereoize this effect by just using these two knobs, uh, and they tap into that. Um, you can imagine it's like two delays packed into one. You have two signals, and so um, knob one controls this wire, and knob two controls uh, uh, this one, this wire channel as it's going through. Uh, you could also you could tap in if you wanted to keep the 
mix the same, but you wanted to control the feedback as well on two different controls. So like if you had a long feedback uh, time, but you didn't want it to have the same amount of feedback as the short channel, but you wanted to last, you know, you have one, one channel that's going um, a fast delay, um, but you don't, you want it to decay in the same amount of time it takes for another channel to decay. Uh, you can set those two feedback levels to different um, uh, levels, right? So you'd have more uh, feedback for the shorter channel, right? So one and one, and you have less feedback for the channel that's going longer. And then now you still have one unified mix channel for both of those uh, channels going through that delay effect, right? And what I'm using here is the combine and split modules so that we split that poly signal back again because you can't you can't just take this poly signal and select it like that what's going to happen is all you're going to get is channel one on both of the left and the right you have to split that poly signal back apart to have the left and the right channels because if you if you any kind of poly signal put it into an input and it's not expecting a poly signal all it's going to look at is channel one Okay, so that was, um, you know, both a kind of short primer on this, you know, what I did, the thinking behind creating these modules. Uh, ultimately, you know, what I was talking about on the stream uh, before it was so sadly discovered to be uh, worthless because of the audio, I uh, might change this a little bit before it ends up in the module library itself, but I will... Um, at least have this as a patch in the, um, the notes on the forum so that you can download this and play with it. Uh, in the future, I will, um, pretty much anything that I build now for Audulous, I will try to also make a video as I'm doing it so that you can watch along. Um, they're not going, they're going to be um, videos that are more geared towards people who want to build their own modules, obviously. There's a lot of people in Audulous who all they care about is, I just want to use the modules that, that are there and hope that other users come up with other ones, but you don't want to get down to going inside of the modules and doing all of this kind of, you know, basically visual programming on the inside. And I totally respect that and get it. And those episodes won't be for you, but, um, you know, for other people who uh, want to get into this side of Audulous, uh, these will be really valuable for you guys to, to check out. And I recommend, uh, if you can, uh, understand me at a faster speed. Uh, you might want to just pop it up to times 1.5 or times 2 speed. I, I don't understand people who, who uh, watch all their tutorials on, on times 1 speed. I feel like, I mean, is there enough time in the world uh, to do that? You have people like me, like I'm rambling right now. Uh, why not just shut up and get off the stream and, you know, the stream ended. <laughs> uh, the stream ended the last time when I, when I uh, sadly didn't check my audio before I um, started up. But anyway, um, next, next episode I might go back and do a, uh, a more patch using the modules in the library and maybe do a one you know, one after the other, kind of alternate between doing a build uh, wired up and a, uh, you know, creating a patch wired up so that we can kind of uh, bounce back and forth between the two. But yeah, you'll see these uh, new tiles and modules appear in, a, in an update uh, coming soon, hopefully, so that you guys can more effectively use uh, Audulous as an audio effect rather than, you know, what people are doing now is you're going to hear and just creating two of these and going like that. I mean, that's not, you know, ideal when you're using that in the, uh, the audio unit. I'd like there to be a module that people can just pop in and use. And obviously it was just an oversight on my part and, you know, won't happen again. I promise. I promise. Okay. Thanks for joining me and I will see you on the next episode.